Um, online is your good friend Jacob and Ronnie. Jacob and Ronnie. Uh, uh, Jacob is the official uh, Mason and Ireland attorney. Yep. Anytime we uh, want to sue somebody, which uh, <laughs> is, is uh, weekly, we call Jacob and he talks us down from it. Jacob, um, how are you, man? Hey guys, how are you, John? I thought I was your friend as well. Am I just Mason's friend? No, no, no. I uh, but you, Mason does your spots, so that's why I, yeah. I phrased it that I'm way. Just kidding. I'm um, kidding. How are you guys? I'm, Good, we're man. good. But okay, Jacob, I'm going to start with a weird question. If if I can pretend in in this scenario that Blake Griffin punched me, okay, and I come to you, we're in a restaurant. He may after this show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're in a restaurant, and he punches me, and I come to you, and I say, hey, Jacob, I'm debating whether or not to sue. Does the fact that Blake Griffin makes a lot of money, and we know it, that his salary is public, and we know that his net worth is probably close to $100 million, does that factor into your decision? Well, just because of the fact that you'd be suing a clipper, I would represent you. Now, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, obviously... Any time, as a, you know, as an attorney, we're representing a client. It's very important for us to be able to make sure that there, the chances of recovery are there. And normally, it's usually either a client who has insurance in order to protect them, or somebody who has, uh, you know, the assets like a Blake Griffin or any other wealthy person would have. So let's. So let's, is that a yes? So the fact that he that we know he has money. Does that that says well that's more likely that we might sue? Uh, that's absolutely correct. Anytime you know somebody who is wealthy or has money, they're going to become a lot more amenable to lawsuits, especially in situations like this. Okay, now let's just take the actual situation because I want to get a, an idea of what what could happen here. Uh, they're in a bar. Uh, Matthias Testi, uh, who's the equipment guy, and Blake Griffin are in a bar. They're friends. Uh, there are lots of pictures of them, their buddies, their friends. Uh, but Matthias Testi says something that ticks Blake Griffin off, and Blake Griffin punches him in the face. Um, there is not a police report filed, um, but there are many witnesses in this uh, bar or restaurant. What kind of case, if, if, if Testi wanted to pursue this, what could he expect in the way of damages, and how would he go about doing it? Well, there, there's two things. From from what I have, uh, you know, investigated, it seems like that he hit him one time and then Tessie left the restaurant and then he followed him outside and hit him again. Um, that seems to be some of the reports. And yeah, right. basically what, Tess, what Tessie would have would be a two-part, uh, you know, claim. Number one, he can obviously sue assault and, you know, he can file for assault and battery, which is a criminal charge. Uh, against Blake Griffin based on the fact that he got assaulted and battered by him. He can also go the civil route, which is a money recovery, uh, which would be, you know, for his injuries that would have been caused based on this. You can sue for injuries. You can sue for medical bills. You can, you, you know, sue for, you know, uh, emotional distress and any loss of earnings that Testy may end up having based on how, you know, his injuries are going to relate to the type of work that he does on a daily basis as the equipment manager. Now, Jacob, would his case be hurt at all by the fact that he didn't file a police report at the time of the incident? Not at all. The, the police report is basically uh, a necessity, uh, number one, when you're trying to have criminal charges because the police come out, and at that particular moment they would arrest Blake Griffin if, in fact, Testy decides to uh, go ahead and press charges. Due to the fact that there were so many witnesses available, there's definitely going to be an investigation done as to what exactly occurred. But there does not seem to be any kind of uh, you know evidence contrary to what is being reported that actually it was Blake Gr Griffin that made contact and hit Testy. So the evidence is actually rather clear there through the witnesses. And what could you expect in the way of damages in a case like this? You know, I'm not familiar with exactly what his injuries are, but normally when there is an assault and battery, it just depends on that person's, uh, you know, injury. The extent of the injury, can, right. Correct. The extent of the injury is important. I mean, he's an equipment manager. You know, if, for example, let's say he got hit in the shoulder, he got hit in the neck, he got hit in the back, and that injury is going to cause him not to be able to work, there's going to be loss of earnings there. There's going to be doctor bills. And then on top of all that, depending on how bad his injuries are, 
we would be filing for, uh, you know, pain and suffering above and beyond that, which normally is the biggest part of the damage. Okay, right. what if it's not? What if it's none of those things? What if it's just a punch in the face and your eye swelled up and closed? Well, you know, I, I do have to say that in situations like this, especially when there's a celebrity or a sport athlete, a lot of times there is a settlement reach outside of court because they don't want this to continue to drag on and because it's negative publicity. For Blake Griffin. One of the things you have to recall is that Blake Griffin has all of these endorsement deals based on how, you know, the public perceives him. Right. Now for him to be involved, you know, in a potential lawsuit that's going to be dragging on, it's going to be a lot of negative press. And I guarantee you that his, the people who are paying him a lot of money to endorse are not going to be happy about his reputation being affected. Um, so I'm sure this will be one of those things that will come to a settlement rather quick. Okay, Jacob, two two quick things for me, and then I'm done. Does it make a difference? Brian Kamenetsky just just texted me, and this is a good question. Does it make a difference that this happened in Canada? In other words, could I hire you as my attorney because I live in Los Angeles, and would we file suit? here or would we file suit in canada what how does that play into this that, that's a great question actually uh it doesn't make a difference because you can sue the individual who has committed this you know malice where they live you could sue where the incident occurred or you could sue you know where the malice occurred so even if this occurred you know uh, anywhere else you could still come back to los angeles and use california's laws in your favor and california is a very personal injury friendly state in comparison to the rest of the country so they can absolutely sue him here all right and the last thing is because this is a sports star we know that the clippers aren't going to fire blake griffin um you know he's probably going to get suspended he may get fined um if matthias testi gets fired over this because those two can't coexist in the same space is 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 that a wrongful termination suit? Is that part of the pain and suffering suit? Is that a separate action? How would that work? Absolutely. That would be a complete separate action. It would be a wrongful termination. It could be a retaliation lawsuit as well. I mean, we spoke just a few weeks ago about what happened to T.J. Simers, and in that situation, T.J. had quit. In this situation, you know, this guy is going to get fired, and it's going to be very obvious he's getting fired based on the fact that he decided to take action against the star on the team. So, you know, there would be multiple lawsuits that would come after that for wrongful termination, retaliation, and he would have a, you know, very, very good case in order to prevail based on both of those. Okay, one last question. This incident did not happen in the workplace. How does that change... Uh, the situation, if at all. In other words, they're if, but they're in the same. They work together, right? Yeah, but if that's John, a good if John and I are out at a restaurant and uh, and I punch him, does that give my boss recourse to fire me because that it didn't happen in the workplace? Well, you're, you're actually, you just asked a couple of questions. You kind of stole my thunder because I was going to go to a work comp claim that Testy may end up having as well. But let me answer those in two parts. Number one. Based on the fact that, you know, uh, I'm not sure how the Clippers consider their people on the clock or off the clock because it appears that, you know, they're away, they're, you know, they are going to be having a game. So if he's considered on the clock, not only can he have a lawsuit against Blake Griffin, but it could also be a workers' comp claim he could file against the Clippers because he got injured if he's considered on the job. So Mm. that's the first part of yet another claim that he may have for his injuries, okay? So that's one. Um, in terms of what could occur uh, because of the fact that, let's say, they were not on the job and the Clippers begin, you know, say that they're going to fire him, this is more about sort of the moral aspect of how they want their employees to be behaving. And I think the Clippers, depending on the type of contract that this equipment manager has signed, if there are some moral clauses in there that says that if you are you know, end up getting into a fight or something like that, we can terminate you again. We don't have their contract then they may have a cause as well. So a lot of these things that you were talking about is hyper, you know, hypothetical, but we would have to see what kind of contracts and what kind of uh, claims the Clippers would have against him if they say that you know he was partly at fault for what has occurred here. All right. Hey, all great information. Thank you. We love going to you for the legal perspective on, uh, on things. Jacob and Ronnie, uh, thanks for coming on. Great talking to you guys. Have a great day. Right, Thank cool. you, Jacob. Um, all right. We, uh, we- 